want to know how to find high revenue, fast selling items for your reselling business? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Hi, I'm Rebecca the Reseller. I'm a six figure reseller on multiple platforms like Poshmark, Mercari, etc, etc. Before we get into the video, please make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the Vendu YouTube channel. We publish videos every Friday and they're always about reselling and how to grow your business. Okay, let's dive in. Today I'll be sharing with you five criteria that I use to help me find high value and high revenue fast selling items to sell on Poshmark, Mercari, etc., wherever you may sell. So for me, something that I've talked about in the past, then the first criteria is that I'm looking for items that have signs of inherent value. So they're already valuable just on their own. It's not necessarily something that is trending or in style or something that could change. These are kind of like evergreen items of value. And so some of those criteria that you'd be looking for are things that have to do with the brand, things that have to do with the fabric of the item, and things that have to do with the item type that it is. So for me, if you know that there is a brand that is always going to be a high-end designer type brand, let's say a Gucci or a Prada, like that's a great brand to sell. There's always going to be potentially a market for it. And so that potentially could be a safe bet that it's going to be an item of value. But then there are other brands that you know, based on your own experience in selling, are good brands for you to sell. Like, I like selling good American jeans. I like selling Spanx. <laughs> I like selling cashmere sweaters, which leads me into my next topic. So you wanna look for brands that work well for you and that have value and that can hold their value. The next thing, as I mentioned with cashmere sweaters, is fabric type. So whether it's linen, whether it's silk, whether it's cashmere, these are all things that are highly desirable. Sometimes you might even like to sell alpaca. I like selling alpaca. You might like selling fur. You might like selling an item that's genuine leather, 100% leather. So these are item fabric types that have inherent value due to the nature of that fabric. And so if you're looking for those kinds of fabric items instead of acrylic and polyester and rayon and things like that, then those items are already gonna have more inherent value and may potentially sell faster. Now, the last part of this particular item value area or category is item type. So for me, I'm selling a lot less tops than I used to because Tops aren't as valuable most of the time as let's say a jacket. Tops are not as valuable as let's say a pair of jeans. Tops are not as valuable as a dress in my opinion. Now, if you have a silk top and a polyester dress, then I guess the top would be better. <laughs> but generally speaking, I'm trying to go after item types that just inherently have more value. Somebody is more willing to spend more money on a dress. A dress may sell faster because someone is already looking for that kind of style or that kind of brand or that silk dress from Diane von Furstenberg or whatever it is. So for me, looking to the item of value, that's kind of the first place that I start when deciding what kinds of items I want to bring into my reselling business to sell. The next one is, have I sold it before? My comps, because you'll hear a lot of resellers say, check comps, and I think that's a good thing to do. And in the beginning, when you're first starting to sell, you may not have a lot of your own comps to go off of. So you do need to see what other resellers are doing and you need to check comps. So definitely that's a good best practice. But over time, you can learn to rely on your own comps and your own solds for guidance. And that's something I've mentioned in the past is letting your solds guide you. So for me, I know that I have had a good track record with let's say the good American jeans. They've sold well for me. They've sold for good prices. They've sold quickly. So that's an item that I'm gonna continue to look for and want to sell more of until I don't have that same experience. 
Spanx is another one. I love selling Spanx. Anytime I can get my hands on some Spanx, I am like 100% buying them and putting them in my store because they sell really well. I love selling Spanx. And as I said earlier, I love selling cashmere sweaters for the same reason. So those are items that based on my own comps, based on my own solds, I want to continue to replicate that type of sale because it went well for me in the past. Now, if I had a t-shirt or even a dress, let's say, and it doesn't matter with the item type, but let's say I had a dress that just sat and sat and sat and sat and sat and it hadn't sold, I'm not gonna continue to look for things like that dress. I can tell you right now, I have a fur vest that I've had for a long time and I thought, oh, this is valuable, it's fur. Someone wants this. No one has bought that fur vest. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep sitting on it because it's valuable enough that eventually, when that one person does want it, it will sell for a good amount of money, fingers crossed. But when I'm looking for high value, fast selling items, I'm not gonna be picking up fur anymore because that didn't work well for me before. So that's what I mean about looking at your own comps and your own solds is what's worked for you, do that again. What hasn't worked for you, stop doing that. It's pretty easy. The next one is can I price this high enough and still send out good offers and good discounts to influence a sale and still make money. So for me, I have heard from people that like, they can't offer free shipping or they can't send out 50% offers or they can't do the kinds of discounts they may have seen me refer to because they wouldn't make any money and it would eat into their profits. And that goes back to basically a sourcing issue. So what you want to do is fill your store, fill your Poshmark closet, wherever you're selling, with items that can handle and absorb discounts and free shipping or whatever it might be. So for me, I buy items that I can list for $50, knowing that it'd be great if they sold for $50, but most of the time they're not gonna exactly sell for $50. They're gonna sell for an offer 10% off, or they're gonna sell for a 20% off offer with discounted shipping. Or maybe I'm gonna have a super duper sale for a holiday and I'm gonna run a 50% offer and it's gonna sell for 25. For me, if I know that I can buy items that warrant a $50 listing price, and that I can offer the discounts that are in my arsenal to do and that work with my business model, that I can still end up making money even after all of that. Even after I do a 50% offer, if I can't make the money I wanna make on that item, then I'm not gonna buy that item and list it. So I'm not selling $10 items anymore. I'm not selling $15 items. I'm not, for the most part, every once in a while, but for the most part, I'm not even listing items that warrant a $35 listing price. I want stuff that I can list for 50. And that doesn't mean take a $30 item and list it for 50 just because you wanna list it for 50. It has to kinda hold the value, it kinda has to make sense. Um, and always feel free to check out my Poshmark closet. It's at on my rack. You know, if you ever wanna see examples of some of the things that I'm talking about, because you need to be able to buy things that warrant the price that also can absorb the discounts that you need to offer in order to influence sales. Buyers on Poshmark specifically are now kind of conditioned to expect an offer to likers or you know on Mercari you can send offers to and on eBay you can run sales etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So you want to be able to still have wiggle room in your pricing to be able to send those good offers and give people those good deals or accept incoming offers, but at the same time, have it priced high enough so that you can still make the money you wanna make. Hopefully that makes sense for you. That one may differ for people depending on what you can find, but I always encourage you to sell what you can, but always try to up-level the kinds of things that you're buying. It's okay to say no to some items so that you can get the items in your store and spend time and money on the items that are going to get you a better return. The next criteria that I utilize for high value, high revenue, fast selling items is a newer tag from that brand or a recent style. So some brands, let's say J. Crew as an example, 
actually put what season it's from in their tags and it will say it's from holiday 2017 or it will say it's from spring 2022 and so you know exactly when that item came out and how old it is i think banana republic does it i think gap does it so sometimes an item right in the tags <laughs> says how old it is you can check it that way you can also check by lots of resellers will share like the new White House black market tag versus the old White House black market tag. That's something I've posted in Reels. Some resellers talk about Lululemon, some resellers talk about J. Crew. And so you can find in the YouTube and Instagram area for reselling people that share about the tags and what the new tag looks like versus the old tag. So I'm constantly looking for the items that have the new tag and I'm less wanting to pick up the items that have the old tag because it tells you the item is older. And then if it's older, it may not be as in style. Now, I've never been a big style shopper. I'm just, I wear plain things. I don't really care about the latest trends. I'm not in reselling for the fashion per se. I'm in reselling because it's a great business that I can do from home while staying home with my son. And I'm super passionate about moms being able to make extra money through reselling. Anyone, but moms too. For me, I've never really trusted my style picker or my style sixth sense. I just don't have it. And so I sometimes will pick up on a trend and can find things that emulate that trend and sometimes that works well. But I've learned over the last few years not to go off of my style sense <laughs> because it's just not always on trend with everyone else. So I go off of things that are more of objective indicators. So a new tag versus an old tag, that's an objective indicator. You can tell this is the new White House Black at Market tag. That's the old White House Black Market tag. I'm gonna buy the new item, not the old item, or J. Crew or Banana or whatever. And if you're looking at the date inside the item, you can tell if this item is more than five years old, may not be the kind of item you wanna sell. You might wanna focus on items that are within the last two years, let's say. And then as far as recent style, if you are someone that is good with style and you know that puff sleeves and high-waisted jeans or low rise and vintage, I don't even know what's in style, but whatever you know to be in style based on trends, based on seeing what bloggers are into and fashion websites, then you can go off of those things. I choose not to, but you may want to do that. As long as you're right, it'll work out for you. And if you prove yourself not right, then you may want to back off from using that as a criteria for you and just stick to things like I do, which are more objective things that have to do with what the item actually is and not what the item may be. The last criteria that I utilize for buying high value and fast selling items is items that are in excellent condition. So I shop a lot on Poshmark, I sell a lot on Poshmark, and so I'll use that as an example. I see lots of people that list items with flaws and I've listed items with flaws and I've sold items with flaws. So I'm not anti-selling items with flaws. What I am saying is that you can get more money and sell an item faster if it doesn't have flaws. And sometimes we make mistakes. We go to the thrift store, we don't see the stain or we didn't fully check all the seams and then you see a rip or whatever it might be. So we all make mistakes. I'm not really talking about those. I'm mostly talking about purposely deciding that you're not going to sell items with flaws unless, and then you might have a couple of exceptions. Like if it's a designer item and it's Gucci or Prada or it's Tory Burch or whatever you might you know, deem as worthy, you may be okay with selling those kinds of flawed items. Or maybe you're okay with selling a flaw that can easily be repaired by sewing, but you don't want to sell flaws that are more like a discoloration or a stain because you don't know if it's going to come out or not. Or you might buy something with a flaw and if you can't fix it, then you're not going to list it. So you can have a variety of criteria for yourself that make sense for you. Like I don't have sewing skills, so I'm not really a sewing, let's fix it up kind of person. And I really don't have a lot of stain treating patients. <laughs> so for me, if I can't easily get it out in the wash, I'm not dealing with it. So for me, I'm really picky about the flaws that I'm interested in dealing with. 
And I think that that helps me because I'm not putting as many flawed items into my store that can take longer to sell because if you have something with a sewing issue, not everyone knows how to sew. Not everyone even has sewing thread and needles and I have a kit, I don't use it. When my mom comes, <laughs> my mom helps sew things for me because I don't have a desire to learn. I don't have the patience to deal with it. I don't have the time to sit there and try to figure it out. So for me, you know, sewing things, those are not the kinds of flaws I wanna deal with. So I'm buying things that are excellent condition, putting them in my store is excellent condition, and not listing things that have flaws of some kind because those would take a little bit longer to find the right buyer and potentially because there is a flaw, wouldn't sell for as high a value. So those are the five criteria that I utilize and there's obviously a combination, there's always exceptions, and those are just mine for my personal reselling business. But for you, you might take a couple of these away and decide to start implementing them and that might help you find that the items you do put in your store sell for a higher amount and sell a little bit faster because you don't have some of the issues described in these criteria. So thanks so much for going along on that journey with me. I really hope that you find some value in those five criteria. And I thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the Vendu YouTube channel for more useful reseller information and Vendu software updates. I will see you in the next video. Bye.